Thank God for Netflix. For a second, I thought I was gonna have to, like, go outside or interact with another person or pursue a life goal. I mean, I've got things to watch. One thing that I love about these Netflix original series is, is, is they just seem to come out of nowhere sometimes. I think it was less than a month ago when I first saw the trailer for Stranger Things, an eight-part series that will make you nostalgic in some way. So this series was written and directed by the Duffer Brothers, I think I'm saying that right, and it revolves around some mysterious and supernatural goings-on, some spooky doings, in a small town in the 1980s. This show could have been nostalgic enough given its subject matter, but having it actually set in the 80s just adds to it, and you feel like you're discovering something that was like made in the 80s that you never knew existed. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, and you want to, just go watch the whole thing right now, because I can't talk about how awesome it is without spoiling a few things. So we're first introduced to a group of four best friends who spend most of their time riding bikes, talking on walkie-talkies, and playing D&D in a basement. And immediately, all the 30-somethings are in. These kids are like obviously very reminiscent of the kids from the Goonies, Stand By Me, Explorers. They're the nerds and the outcasts, but more than that, these kids are actually really, really good actors. I was very impressed with them specifically in this series. So right at the beginning, one of the four kids goes missing. Was he taken by an alien? A creature from another dimension? Corey Feldman? We don't know. But clearly something supernatural is happening. At the same time, a little girl shows up out of nowhere. She's got a shaved head, a hospital gown, a striking demeanor, and quite possibly telekinetic powers. Not quite possibly, she actually, she, that's, that's what she has. I told you I would spoil things. So she's found by our gang of goonies and they tried to keep her hidden in their basement. Sounds really weird, but it's like E.T., so it's okay. And this kid doesn't know social norms. I mean, something's going on. She's clearly never interacted with other kids before. Her name's Eleven, so that's that's not normal. So you're getting some really strong E.T. vibes and a little bit of uh, Stephen King's Firestarter. So at the same time, you've got the mother of the kid who's disappeared, played by Winona Ryder, and she's freaking out, obviously. And she slowly starts to realize that he's not just lost in another place, but he could be lost in another planet? Another dimension? At first I wasn't totally sold on Winona, but after a while when she starts to go into like awesome mom mode, like I am gonna find my son no matter what, and then it starts to become awesome. It's nice to see Winona back and stealing scenes other than, you know. We've also got the sheriff of the town who's this like disheveled alcoholic shell of a man and he's trying to find the kid. He's lost his daughter years ago, but this is like motivating him to get the job done and uncover the conspiracy. And this is where it really starts to feel kind of x files -y with like discovering the truth. And there's a bunch of people in suits and you know they're bad because they're in suits. And we've also got the brother, the older brother of the kid who went missing and the older sister of one of the main kids and they kind of have this relationship and they kind of uh, discover secrets about the monster that may have took the kid, and this was probably my least favorite aspect of the series. They kind of serve as a romantic story, sort of. I don't know, maybe it's just me, I wasn't totally crazy about their characters, and the only time I thought it really got awesome was towards the end when they like, set a trap for the monster via Nightmare on Elm Street style. So you notice I'm name dropping a lot of movies that this show very cleverly references. It's kind of like you took a lot of 80s era sci-fi and mystery and, and horror and just kind of put it in a blender and got something really original and unique out of it. And it feels fresh because it's not just a carbon copy of stuff we've seen before. These are original and interesting characters and they have their own arcs and they're fleshed out really well. The mystery really grabs you and the twists just keep coming and it keeps you coming back for more. And it cleverly uses its visual style to harken back to the stuff that it's referencing. The music for the show is like straight out of a John Carpenter film. There's a scene that is almost a direct reference to E.T. It's just one big throwback love fest. And you can clearly tell that the creators of the show have a lot of love for the stuff that they're referencing. It never feels pandering. It's never like, oh, hey, you like the Goonies? Well, check out this series. It's just a fantastic series. Some of the best TV of the year. Although, can you really call it TV? I mean, it's a Netflix show. I watched most of it on my laptop. It's technically online content. I mean, we just, we just can't keep throwing around this television word much longer, people. And it also pretty much came out at the perfect time that now we have all this nostalgia for the 80s and the 90s and John Carpenter and Spielberg movies are kind of making a resurgence. So what'd you guys think of Stranger Things? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you just think it was okay? 
Well, that's interesting. You never hear that on the internet. Did it make you want to write your own 80s horror throwback screenplay? Nothing to see here! What if this whole time I've been looking for Will? I've been chasing after something else. 